Hello. Today I am going to talk to you about Fitz U Curtis syndrome. This syndrome is a rare complication of pelvic inflammatory disease named after two physicians, Thomas Fitz U Jr. and Arthur Hale Curtis, who first reported the condition in 1934 and 1930 respectively. Although this extrahepatic manifestation is reported to be a rare complication of pelvic inflammatory disease in the western literature it is seen very commonly in indian patients we have seen it in greater than 30% of women with pelvic inflammatory disease as far as its pathophysiology is concerned it is thought to result from direct intraperitoneal spread of infection towards the perihepatic region from initial pelvic inflammatory disease it is usually caused by gonorrhea or chlamydia bacteria recent studies have shown that cases of fitz u curtis syndrome due to chlamydia trachomatis infection outnumber those due to neisseria gonorrhea infection by almost 5 to 1 by and large giant tuberculosis does not cause any hepatitis bacteroids and facultative organisms such as gardnerella E. coli and streptococcus may also play a role in some cases but are less commonly involved. The perihepatitis results in characteristic viral string adhesions between the Gleason's capsule and the parietal peritoneum. Majority of the patients are asymptomatic. Symptoms and signs include an acute onset of right upper quadrant abdominal pain aggravated by breathing, coughing or laughing. which may be referred to the right shoulder there is usually also tenderness on palpation of the right upper abdomen and tenderness to percussion of the lower ribs which protect the liver surprisingly there is often no or only minimal pelvic pain vaginal discharge or cervical motion tenderness which may lead to the diagnosis being missed actually the syndrome has two phases acute phase the features of which i have just described and the chronic phase where the patient may be asymptomatic or may have a persistent dull pain in the right upper quadrant a diagnostic perihepatic rub may be heard in the right costal region listening at the anterior costal margin may reveal a finding described as walking in the snow type of crunching friction rub In every patient found to have evidence of pelvic inflammatory disease on laparoscopy done for infertility pelvic inflammatory disease or chronic pelvic pain the laparoscope must be directed towards the right hypochondriac region to look for perihepatitis presence of viral string adhesions is diagnostic of the syndrome diagnosis may also be confirmed by the presence of neisseria gonorrhea or chlamydia trachomatis in fluid from the peritoneal cavity although this is not necessary here a diagnostic laparoscopy is being done for a 29 year old patient with infertility you can see thickened white patches on the tubule and uterine serosa the fallopian tubes appear thickened and straight During the scope towards the liver, one can see the characteristic valve string adhesions. Treatment involves a course of antibiotics to cover the appropriate organisms, typically ceftriaxone and azithromycin. Laparoscopic lysis of adhesions may be performed for refractory pain. However, relief of symptoms with lysis of adhesions is of questionable benefit. For further reading on this topic and other topics, refer to following textbooks written by me.
practical obstetrics and gynecology, modern obstetrics, modern gynecology, clinical cases in obstetrics questions and answers, and pelvic reconstructive surgery.